Hey everyone, in this video I hope to explain with a code demonstration um, not only what is a view model, but also what are the benefits of using view models. So we'll start with the first question, what is a view model? And uh, we'll start with the, the demonstration, which is a uh, user model and a workout log model. So what we have here is a UML diagram, very standard. Uh, one to many relationships in a uh, you know in a normalized database system and so uh, one user has many workout logs and so that's what these little symbols here mean this would be a user model which would represent a user table in a database and a workout log model uh, aka a class uh, that would translate to a table in a database and so we have a very standard one-to-many relationship and when you have these models um, there another word for them are uh, domain models and so you would call this the user domain model and the workout log domain model and the purpose of domain models is very specific uh, to work with uh, a database and so you take um, a ORM and an uh, object relational mapping tools such as entity framework uh, inside of asp.net core uh, entity framework uh, maps it's an orm it, uh, object relational mapping it maps classes or our models to our database tables um, and and so these again these domain models have a very specific purpose which is for working with the database what is a view model? Well, a view model is not a domain model, but it is a, a model. And as we know in MVC, uh, a model is just a class. So it is a C-sharp class or whatever your uh, language is. In, in our case, we're working with C-sharp. Uh, it is a C-sharp class that's intent, its purpose is for a view. And so it is essentially not working with the back end that's that's what a domain model does um, such as in our uml diagram users and workout logs are our domain models but a view model is the data that is going to be sent to the view so so that is a, a view model it's the the class that represents the data that's going to be sent to the front end um, for the user. Now, what are the, uh, for the user to view that data? Now, what are the benefits of the view model? Again, I'm gonna do a coding demonstration, so I hope to demonstrate um, the benefits of using vo uh, view models in my code. Now, uh, I am using Visual Studio Community 2022, and I am working with uh, ASP.NET Core. So uh, you'll need to download uh, the installer for Visual Studio Community, and you will need to select uh, on the installer uh, ASP.NET Web Application Development. And that's the prerequisites to this video. Hopefully, uh, you're somewhat familiar with MVC um, because this is um, a video that, that dives a little deeper into MVC architecture with these view models. Okay, we're gonna create a new project. And I'm going to select an ASP.NET Core web app model view controller. You can see it over here on my right hand side. You need to, I filtered C sharp and web on these drop down menus. And I'm just going to call this view model and I'll call this gym view model demo. Okay, for my project name. And we'll, we'll spin up a very standard no authentication. Uh, we're going to create our own users in this case. Okay, so I'm going to move this off to the side. And all we have kind of out of the box is a standard MVC template. And there we go. So we, we click play. There, There's nothing much to see here, uh, just a landing page. And so uh, what I need to do here is I'm going to uh, and invite you to code along, spin up some domain models. So let's start by adding some domain models 
and then we're going to create a database using those models and very specifically show how those domain models work with the database. And so um, as my UML showed, I will have a new class inside my models and this will be my user class. And again, I just want to emphasize that this is referred to as a domain model, which the whole purpose of the domain model is to work with the database. And we are going to have an ID, user ID, that is our primary key in the database. It'll be an auto incrementing uh, primary key. Um, I'm going to have a first name property. We'll make that nullable to get rid of that green squigglies. We'll have a nullable last name. I'm going to have an age because sure our users can have an, an age, um, maybe date of birth, but it's not super important. That might um, be a better field for me. Um, I'm going to have a field that might be a little sensitive, right? And um, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, now in our in our UML, we had a we also had a list of workouts. Now, I don't have this class called workout, but our user had many workouts. And this is referred to as a navigation property because uh, it'll allow us to have a user dot workouts and you could loop over that. Um, but this is how you create a one to many. This is a user, oh, well, there it was, one to many. A user has one user can have many workouts. And so it's a little foreshadowing for um, the entity framework portion of, of our class uh, for my students, but suffice to say, we're gonna be able to create one-to-many relationships. Now, we need to create this class, generate uh, a new class. I'm just going to right-click, add a class called Workout. Actually, uh, I'm going to call this workout log. Okay, my class will be called a workout log. Um, so let's add a class called workout log. Again, this is a domain model. And I'll bring in some fields, uh, an ID. Prop workout log ID. Uh, we'll have a date, date only, date. Uh, we'll set like a duration in minutes. Public int duration. I'll specify in minutes and public int calories burned and so some basic information there now on the workout log back to our UML um, here you can see that there's a user ID foreign key and so a workout log well each workout log belongs to one user so I will bring in a public int user ID that is my foreign key and a navigation property. And I do want to add the validate never attribute. That's a little bit of validation. Actually, probably not super important to add that, but nonetheless, um, I'll make that nullable user. And so this is how you set up a one-to-many, again, with a domain model. And so now I need to bring in entity framework and create the database. And so um, to do that, I'll be using local DB, which is a SQL Server uh, version. It's a version of SQL Server. And I need to install Entity Framework. I'll click on Browse. 
And if I search for Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server, there's two dependencies you got to bring in, um, which is the SQL Server for Entity Framework Core. Again, we'll be working with Local DB, which is a version of SQL Server. And that's installed. And then Tools. And so let's install the tools. And you can see all the DB, DB context tools. Uh, are inside of this tools package and so save all this up close 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 now um, in order to interact with the database using entity framework we're going to create a context file um, and so I can do that now I'm going to add a class here called gym context and this context file will inherit from DB context. And it's not going to be recognized until I import any framework here. So add a using statement. There's a nice shorthand syntax because typically what you have to do is have a constructor. So this is my constructor that accepts a, an options object and passes it up to the parent. And thankfully, there's a shorthand syntax. I can condense this down to say use a primary constructor. So this is a little bit newer feature of C Sharp. I'm not super uh, versed with it yet, but nonetheless, Visual Studio can help you out there. Um, so that's our context file. Now, we need a table of user called users and public db set of uh what do we call it workout logs called workouts so we'll have a table of users we'll have a table called workouts and then we need c data and so there's a method um, to seed your database tables with data and i'm just going to copy and paste here um, from my other screen. So as we look at this, we basically have a method called onModelCreating that is used to seed our user table with two users and seed our workout logs um, with five different workouts. You could see John here has two workouts and Jane has three workouts. And so to kind of show that all on one screen I can zoom out uh, to see all the code there and so um, that's going to be the the data that's inside of our tables uh, using this context file now we also need to wire up a connection string connection strings are configured here in app settings it's typically where we're going to put a connection string and I will highlight the code here for this I'm going to add a comma uh, so I'm going to create a connection string here called gymcs. So my gym connection string, it is using local DB, Microsoft SQL Server local DB. My database name is Gudmusted Gym. Last name, Gudmusted. This is a gym application, so there you go. And that is how you create a connection string and give that connection string a name. The next thing to do is marry the connection string in with our context file and what's called dependency injection inside of program cs so inside of program cs um, we get to add a line of code that enables dependency injection so this is going to be after add controllers with views so this is dependency injection and really what this allows us to do, the, 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 the fancy term dependency injection can really be boiled down to, um, this is what line nine does. It will instantiate our gym context. It'll create an instance of that object um, that we can use in different parts of our application. And so we have a context file and instead of instantiating that ourselves, we can accept our context file as an argument because uh, the services container will actually instantiate that for us. 
And so that's what dependency injection is. It allows our uh, services container to instantiate objects and then pass those objects in at different places in our application. And so that's, that's really all it is. We don't have to instantiate our gym context ourselves. We can just pass it in somewhere. Um, and that should wire us up to create our database and seed our data. Now, uh, you don't need to do this part because I already have a Gudmasted gym. So I need to kind of go in to here and delete my gym because um, I already created it. I need to delete it so that I can recreate it. Now we are ready to um, run a migration. So we're going to say add migration initial init. And this is on our package manager console. We're getting there. We just had to get everything set up. Creating two tables, creating a users table, creating a workouts table adding users to our users table, adding workouts to our workouts table. All of that looks good. Let's execute our uh, migration with the update database command. Cool. So now if I go back to SQL Server Object Explorer, refresh a couple times, expand my databases, there's my Gudmasted gym. And there are my two tables full of my five workouts. Oops, click. There's my five workouts. And there's my two users. Cool. We have demonstrated how domain models can be used. Here's our user class and our workout log class to interact with the database and create tables in our database using Entity Framework. And that's the point of a domain model. Now, normally, because it's easy, you can use domain models um, in your views, okay? However, uh, that's not considered a best practice. And so if I were to, um, don't don't do these steps okay um if i were to add a controller and an mvc controller with entity framework i'm just going to delete this and i'm going to say hey i'm going to user gym context generate the views user controller okay so i'm going to do a little bit of a what's known as scaffolding, which is code generation. And this is going to do the CRUD operations on users, create, read, update, delete. Um, and, and the reason I'm doing this is because um, it is very common to take domain models and send them into views. And so, for example, here, on line 35, I'm getting a user detail by ID. So this is like getting my user five. And uh, here we got the keyword var, but really what line 35 is, is a strongly typed user. It creates a user and then sends that user into the view. So line 35, regardless if it says var or it says user, it resolves into a user class and then sends that user into the view. And I would say that that's easy and common to take your domain models and use them in your views. However, going back to um, the benefits of using view models, um, well, they separate the concerns. And so in web development, like the first languages you learn, right? HTML and CSS and JavaScript. And what are the benefits of having all these different three different languages uh, versus why can't you just do it all in one? And, you know, going back into like for me, the 90s and HTML4, and they used to have the font color tag in HTML. 
And so you would control your font colors in HTML, and then they separated out those concerns. HTML is for content, font colors are your CSS. And so HTML is for content, CSS is for styling, JavaScript is for you know making the page dynamic. Uh, it's the same thing here, separation of concerns. So that's the benefit of like separating out what's the purpose of a domain model. Domain model for the database, uh, view model for the view. And so you're separating your concerns. It helps you troubleshoot problems. Um, are you having a problem with your domain model because of the database? Are you having database problems? Then maybe you're looking at the domain model. Are you having view problems? Then maybe you're looking at the view model. And so uh, separation of concerns is you know, like something that always comes up in web development. And this is one of those times where having a view model has a different purpose, a different you know, a separation of concerns. And so it helps you troubleshoot. It helps you fix problems, you know, to say, okay, well, um, you know, this particular thing has a specific purpose. And so if I'm having a problem with the database, maybe you look at the domain models. If I'm having a problem with the view, maybe you're looking at the view model. Okay. Um, so that's number one. That's a benefit of using a view model. Um, let me demonstrate now that I've explained, hey, we have these different purposes of domain models and view models, um, how, how this could be done a little differently, right? So I am actually, just because I was just demonstrating this, I'm going to delete my user's controller. Again, that was just for the demonstration. And under views, users, I'm going to delete all that. Okay, so again, we're kind of back to the home view, and um, let me let me do a demonstration of using a view model and sending that view model into the view. So um, here, under my models, um, it's pretty common to have folders here, so I'll have a view models folder, and I will add my first view model. I'm just going to call this my user view model. Notice now I have a subfolder in my namespace. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to come back to that. Now my user view model, um, what it probably I, well, let me rename this. I'm going to call it user, I can call it users view model. Um, eh, let's see. Do I want to do that? Sure. So let me just refactor this, rename, put a users view model, and hopefully it renamed my file. It did, man, v Visual Studio is slick. And so all I'm gonna do here is have a list of users, public list of user called users, get set, and I'll, I'll instantiate this list to be an empty list on the start. Okay, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to use this user's view model to, um, let me back up, uh, my homepage, when, when, the, when the site launches, I just want to iterate over my users and pull out their names and make clickable links so I can get user details so that if I click the link, I could see all the workouts for that user, right? So with this user's view model, all I'm going to do is I'm going to, pull out the user's name, whatever user information I have, I can pull it out on the home page, and then I'll have a link for each user to click that link and see their workouts. So um, the point of a view model is to start with the end in mind. What's the end? The end is what the user sees. So what data do you need to pull out of the database um, to show the user? In this case, I just have a list of users. Um, now, you might say, well, couldn't I just use the domain model for that? And yes, you could. Uh, but here in a little bit, again, we talk about separation of concerns. We're going to talk about security as well. Um, and so maybe there's a reason why you, you shouldn't do that. Um, so here's our user's view model. Again, we've got our home controller. And the index here is where... 
uh, this is our landing method, right? This is the first method. This is the default. Um, let me add a users view model. It brings in the view models folder up top. So we're going to instantiate a view model here. And um, what I want to do, I need, of course, I need to interact with the database. So I'm going to bring in a context uh, field. So I'm going to say private read only a gym context called underscore context. Okay, now this is where the dependency injection comes in. Right, we're going to have our constructor and we're going to pass in an object of type gym context. Again, I said that was instantiated earlier, so we can pass it into the constructor and initialize our field on line 15. Okay, so this right here is the, the benefit of a dependency injection. We could just pass in this object that was constructed elsewhere in the pipeline. So there's home controller. Um, not really worried about this logger field. We could do without that. I can delete that and it's not gonna cause any issues. Um, okay, so now we have this underscore context that allows us to hit our database. So now let's read our users out of the database. var users equals context users to list. Now check this out. I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm gonna say, for each var user in users, I'm going to do a user view model users add a new user. And you're going to notice what I'm not going to do is pass the salary to the view. User ID equals user, user ID. First name is first name, last name is last name, age is user age. So I'm able to, in my view model, I'm gonna add a user that does not have a, have a salary. And so we kind of extract that sensitive field and we don't send that sensitive field data to the view. Now to even make this a little bit better, we could have a user class that literally doesn't even include the property. But um, just to show that we can keep that sensitive data out of the view, it's stored in the database, but we're not sending it to the view. Sending that property to the view opens up malicious end users to allow them to try and post that field back to the server. In other words, potentially change the salary of your user by posting a dot salary property. Um, so here, there's a users list. We're adding a user class and we're not including the salary. We're not sending that forward. Again, um, making another class even without the salary field is probably the next layer there so um, that is the improved security that I'm talking about okay where there might be data in your database that you do not want to send to the front end because that opens up the front end for potential malicious attacks um, which of course those t kinds of attacks have gotten through and worked in the past and that's why we are aware of these security vulnerabilities. Um, and so that is the improved security. So now we're looping through our users and ultimately I'm going to send my users view model. There's the magic right there on line 36. We instantiate this variable on line 23 and we send that to the view. Of course, in order to send that to the view, let me go ahead and open up my view and make this a strongly typed model. Now check this out. It doesn't recognize it. In fact, that's not gonna compile because I need this 
um, namespace inside of my view imports. So notice I don't have that namespace. The view imports, these are imports to all of my views. If I add that namespace right there, and give that a second to compile, uh, let's see. Um, a lot of times this hot reload, which is what it's doing right now, um, it can handle some changes, but it can't handle other changes. So that's probably a case where I need to go ahead and um, shut it down, do a build, and see it is still struggling with my user's view model. I just don't think it's caught up, to be honest. Um, so there's my gym view model here. Gym view model. View models, close that down. Nope, my problem is me. I just need a capital U. Now we have a user's view model. And really what's in there is a list of users, and those users don't have salaries. So let's loop over. Sure, this is our home page. Um, we just want to loop through our list of users on our index and uh, for each user in model.users, uh, user lowercase user identifier. Um, Let's say h1 at user dot first name space at user dot last name. Let's just put it all in a h. Put it all in a paragraph at user dot. What else do we have? Age at user just to show the data. Um, now the property salary is there, but of course there would be no data for salary. That's why, again, I suggested probably what I could do is um, make a new class for that. But nonetheless, uh, first name, last name, age. Okay, that's really all that I wanted to display there. Now, I'm also going to create a link, uh, an anchor tag, that points us to a details method for that user and includes the route ID, the user ID. Um, and that link says, uh, view workouts something like that okay so users view model and this should read the data out of the database and that it does John Doe is 30 view workouts James Smith is 25 and view workouts and in the lower left hand corner you can see it takes you home slash details slash one for John Doe home details two for Jane Doe <clears throat> okay, well, what do I want to see if I click on view workouts? Again, this is the case for the view model. You start with the end in mind. What is the customized data for the view? Well, I really just need um, all the workouts for that user. So I'm going to make another view model. Um, that has my user information and the workouts for that user. So let me go back into my view models. So, you know, what I'm getting at here is that all these controllers can have very customized data that you send forward into the view. 
Okay, whatever that view needs, you don't need more data, you don't need less data. Um, you know, uh, right in the middle, just right, you know. It's not too hot, not, not, not too cold, not too hot. So let's go ahead and make our details public. Uh, I action result details int ID. Okay, so there's my details method. Um, just to get that to compile. And let's create my next view model. So under models, view models, add a class. We'll call this user workout view model. Again, I'm thinking about the data for this screen. I want a public user user and a list of workouts called workouts. Initialize that to an empty list. Ooh, I get three dots here. You're going to show me a condensed way. Hmm, I don't like that as much. Because I think underneath the hood of a list is an array. So they're just kind of doing a shorthand there. I think I like this syntax better. That's just me. Again, this is a view model for sending data to the details view. Um, so back to the home controller. Uh, let's look up our user. So here's a little link query to do a find by ID. That should come in from the route ID uh, with with model binding. That that ID should be passed in thanks to our uh, default pattern here um, and the link that we had set just set up. Let's get the workouts for that user. So we're hitting the database workouts table where the workout dot user ID is the ID that's passed in. Convert that to a list. Uh, user workout view model. Allows us to instantiate um, a user again without the salary in it and I also need to add the workouts so that's the instantiation of our object here let's do user workout model view model dot workouts dot add now it did suggest an add range And looking at that, adds elements to the end of the list. And so since we have many elements, that looks to compile. And then ultimately sending that view model again to the view. So here we're sending one view model to this uh, view on the front end. And we're sending this view model to the details view. I'm going to put in a breakpoint and just step through this as I troubleshoot my my code. I, I don't have the details view yet, but I just want to step through and make sure that nothing's breaking. So here's John Doe. Click on View Workouts. It did hit my method. The ID is 1. So my user is, in fact, John Doe. We're not sending this to the front end. This is still in the back end. So yes, there's a salary there. Uh, let's see. Does John Doe have workouts that we're finding? Yep, two workouts. Instantiate that. Hover over that. Now if I hover my object now on line 55, I've got John Doe with two workouts. And we're sending John Doe with two workouts to the view. So I'm going to stop. That is working as anticipated. Um, so now let's right click the details and add the view. And this will be called details. 
and app model user workout view model and again what I want to do is I'll put the user's name and then for each workout in the do var workout in model workouts workout dot date at workout probably you want to put this in a table make it nice and clean um, duration in minutes at workout dot I'm just getting the, the data thrown onto the screen because that's not the point uh, date to string okay okay so now I should be able to click that link and use that view model so there's Jane Smith with her three workouts and all that information back out John Doe his two workouts with that information I hope I hope that I've demonstrated, number one, what is a view model, uh, how there's benefits of separating concerns, again, helping more in troubleshooting. I didn't demonstrate that as much as I explained it. Um, how you can really just, whatever data you need out of the database, you could put it into a view model. So I'm thinking of complex systems with lots of tables. Um, you know, you can make whatever that view needs um, for that the data out of the database for that view and how um, it can help improve security. Um, thanks for sticking it out to the end. If you made it here, um, thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.